Today we're going to be taking on Spiral Mountain solo. Spiral Mountain is one of the hardest dungeons in the game, and it's a two-player only dungeon. We're going to be taking it on with just us. The constraints of Spiral Mountain make it so that we can only have two Digimon out. So we're going to have to make it work to see how far we can get. As always, here's our gear and Digimon that we're using for the dungeon. We're still using our powerful temporary gear, so hopefully we can make use of that. I also decided to keep the party member that I used to get in the dungeon disconnected in the party. This means that our beam aura couldn't activate, so the one advantage that we could get from being solo, which is to have two Digimon out at the start of battle, we didn't get. Adding a bit to the difficulty of the dungeon. Spiral Mountain is unique in the fact that for every boss section you get a different buff or debuff, which is chosen randomly from a pool of buffs and debuffs. It's completely random, so you can get buffs for the whole dungeon or debuffs for the whole dungeon. I'll be showing the current buff or debuff effect we have at the bottom right of the screen, so that you can tell what we have at each point in the dungeon. For our first boss we have Waymon. Now, Waymon can hit really hard if you hit him a lot before he attacks. We don't have to worry so much about that because we can't get that many attacks off before he attacks either way, because we're only solo. We don't have to worry about having a tank with Provoke out, because we have Dinos Crests on, so all of our Digimon should be able to take a, a hit or two during the dungeon. We're using Medieval Dukemon and Gankumon here because Medieval Dukemon scales off the damage of the Dinos Crest that also make us tanky, and Gankumon can do good damage with just haste and no good stats or anything like that, just for the fact that his exclusive adds fixed damage equivalent to one third of the defense of the Digimon you're, you're attacking which makes it incredibly powerful for this dungeon. Probably the best, or one of the best, uses for Gankumon. In addition to this, both of our Digimon have wind protection and 100% trait chance, so they'll only be getting hit by single target attacks. The single target attacks also drain TP from Waymon, so we had to take that into account as well. All said, it went pretty smoothly. Our second debuff, we got minus 30% trait chance, which definitely is one of the worst ones to get. But basically, on this boss, it just meant that we were doing a bit less damage, which wasn't that big of a problem. This is where I kind of started to worry about a slash because the long fights, uh, the long fights mean that we get awfully close to running out of card slashes. Until Cedramon can add fixed damage to attacks, to all attacks pretty much. On top of this, sometimes it makes its melee attack hit all Digimon, which also means that it can't be dodged by wind protection, and also means that we use more slash because we have to use Holy 7 every time this happens. Metal Cedramon can also dodge 100% accuracy attacks like with force cards, which further led to making it difficult with our card slash situation. Another thing worth noting is that in this dungeon, you normally only have 10 minutes to defeat a boss, so our time was ticking down pretty fast as we were doing this, and it ended up pretty close, but in the end we managed to beat Metal Cedramon. After this fight, we decided to switch out our perfect Fire H for a perfect Dark H, increase our card slash in exchange for some damage for the rest of the dungeon. Dreamon is the easiest boss in the dungeon, he has the lowest HP, and he doesn't have many mechanics that are difficult to deal with. He can evolve occasionally under a certain HP threshold, and I'm pretty sure this can go on infinitely, but luckily this time he didn't even evolve once. He can occasionally reduce damage by half, but that's not really a problem for us. For the Juraemon fight, we have a 15 minute timer, but this also extends to Metal Etamon. Now, Metal Etamon isn't a guaranteed fight after Juraemon, but you do occasionally get to fight him, and we did. So we share our debuff for this fight as well, which is minus 100 defense, which isn't a problem, and Metal Etamon takes massively reduced damage from most attacks. The good thing is that fixed damage isn't affected by this, and our Genkumon helped a lot in this fight too. He did dodge a lot of our attacks, but in the end it was pretty much just an endurance match, which we won. I also wanted to explain, you may see our card slash go up during the fight sometimes when Genkumon attacks rather than down. This is because for his trait I'm using the unexpected plus trait, which is a bit of an unusual one. Every time we land a critical hit, then we gain one card slash. Now, for Genkumon, he can critical hit on his F2 attack, which is what we're using. This doesn't lower his damage that much because his exclusive trait is what is adding 
almost all of his damage in this dungeon, and that is still added to his F2 attack as well. So basically this means that Gankumon is a net gain in card slash, while also doing about half as much or even more damage than my medieval Dukemon. Because he has a 100% trait chance, he activates a critical hit every time on his F2 ability. As long as he hits the target, he will always gain one card slash or attack. The next debuff we got was quite inconvenient. It reduces our VP by 1500. This basically makes it so that we can't use our F2 or F3 abilities. To remedy this, we put a Crest of Knowledge on, which increased our VP enough that we could use plenty of attacks without worrying. The downside is that we were a lot less tanky because we had one less Dinus Crest and our Medieval Dukemon did less damage because of the missing Dinus Crest. We also switched out our Diarc to a Stamina Diarc for an extra 750 HP, just to make sure that we didn't die. Pinocchiomon is one of the most difficult bosses in the dungeon, if you don't know his mechanic. You have to make sure to attack him before he attacks, otherwise his attack becomes a lot more powerful. Additionally, every third attack he reflects fully to one of your teammates, so you need to make sure to attack with a very low damage attack for the third hit, otherwise you will end up killing your ally instead, which is obviously inconvenient when we can only have two Digimon out total. For this fight, we used Lilithmon X, because the extra chance to proc Temptation is way worth using. Since Pinocchimon does a lot of damage, every time that procs, then he'll take massive damage as well. Our strategy for this fight was just use Medieval Dukemon and make sure to attack with Lilithmon X every third attack so that we didn't get hit much damage. We switched up our team. We only needed Gankumon to attack for this one because Romon Zaymon lowers damage by quite a lot depending on how low HP he is. This makes it ideal for Gankumon because his fixed damage ignores this completely. So as Waromon Zaymon got lower HP, the damage didn't really reduce. We used Lilithmon X as well, just to reflect a little bit more damage to him. But in the end, this fight was pretty straightforward for us. There is one mechanic that can cause Waromon Zaymon to do a massive amount of damage in one hit. I'm not really sure how this occurs yet, and luckily we didn't encounter it in this run. Mugendramon's main mechanic is that he ignores Provoke. He will attack whoever he wants to. This doesn't really matter for us because both our Digimon are very tanky because of the Dinus Crests. Mugendramon also reduces damage by quite a lot for each attack, but this also doesn't matter too much for us because our Gankumon is doing a lot of fixed damage, which ignores this. Our Gankumon actually did the most damage this fight, and he really helped us get through this quickly. Thanks to our tankiness, Yukintramon's damage isn't really a problem for us. Additionally, our debuff, which makes us use F2 attacks only, isn't a problem for Gankumon. Lady Devimon can do an incredible amount of damage depending on how much damage you've done to her. Our strategy for this one was to bust her down as fast as possible while using Lilithmon X to hopefully reflect some damage if possible. One Temptation proc did about half of her HP, so that was a really nice bonus. The buff or debuff we got here was pretty important because it would be the last buff or debuff we'd get and continue through the last two bosses. Unfortunately, we got a debuff to only use F2 abilities, which was pretty bad for nothing our medieval Dukemon's damage, but it's still doable. Imon was probably the most difficult fight as a solo player to do in this dungeon. I'm going to play the entire fight so you can see for yourself, because this was extremely close. We decided to use Medieval Dukemon and Rosemon BM as our tank. This is because Rosemon BM has traits that allow her to dodge AoE ranged attacks and single target ranged attacks. This ended up saving us quite a lot of slashes in the end, which was pretty vital in getting through this battle. Paimon's special ability is he summons other Digimon during the fight, which also have different effects. He also occasionally attacks twice. The first few Digimon that he summons are not difficult. They just took up a few of our slashes, which was a little annoying. After we got Paimon a bit lower HP, he summons WarGreymon and Metal Garurumon. Metal Garurumon reflects 1000 fixed damage to the attacker every time you attack. WarGreymon fires undodgeable multi-target attacks that hit extremely hard. It's also fixed damage, so it will ignore defense completely. Throughout the fight, we had to make sure to manage our HP so that we didn't die from the War Greymon hit, and manage our attacks so that we used the minimum possible card slash.
We got to Apocalymon. Apocalymon has two phases. The first phase begins most of the traits of boss Digimon in the dungeon that have drops. Additionally, the reflect mechanic of Pinokimon activates every second attack rather than every third, making it difficult to attack a lot. We can't really use haste very well. We had to count on our medieval Dukemon to do all the damage for the first phase. We attacked with our Dukemon with Avalons, followed by our Lilithmon X with no cards, so that we would reflect almost no damage. We couldn't afford to use something like Fangs, just for the fact that it would take up too much space on our bar, and we needed too many cards. Additionally, it may have taken up too much Slash for us to finish the fight. Surprisingly, we managed to make it through the first phase pretty smoothly, with plenty of Slashes left. Now the second phase, something amazing happened. I was hoping this would happen, but I wasn't sure if we would make it this far anyway, but our Lilithmon rocked Temptation on Apocalymon's attack, which meant that we could skip the entire second phase, which would be just doing one damage, trying to finish him off with Haste and Drill before he, uh, he finished us. So we did it. We completed the entire Spiral Mountain dungeon solo, one of the most difficult dungeons in the game and one meant for two players, with very, very well equipped Digimon. I very much enjoyed doing this dungeon solo, and I think this dungeon in general is a very underrated dungeon. It's a lot of fun. If you want to try it out yourself, make sure to check out my guide in the description. I've made a list of all the unique traits of the bosses in the dungeon, so you can check them out if you're interested in running it. I won't be trying any more solo dungeons for a while. In the future, I would like to do the Zwan dungeon, or at least see how far I can get in it, but that's for a long time in the future. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching. Bye.